It's Saturday morning and we're about to see the first day of racing here in Ienza, Spain. We're up in the castle and you can see the riders are massing behind me. Last night we had the prologue kick off round here, started up on these town walls and then rode all the way down and gave a right sight for the locals to take in. managed to catch up with a couple of the men that are looking to take hold of the championship this year. Got two races to go and you're 230 points back in the series. How are you approaching these last two? Well, you know, like since the beginning of the season, I think everyone is trying hard to be, you know, on the top of the game and everything. And you do know how many things can happen in one race. So there's a thousand points on the table, isn't yeah. there, from these two rounds? Yeah. Clearly. And I have to say it, there is a glint in your eye that you're really going after this. Did this. Yeah, you know, as, as I officially announced, I'm going to be stopping at the end of the season. I'm passionate by the sport and I'm passionate by racing. Racing will be over in, in two weeks, so all the energy that is left over will be in there. So Richie, uh, currently leading out the series at the moment with uh, two great wins the last two rounds. How are you approaching this one? You feeling good? Yeah, feeling good. I was actually feeling a bit nervous, like the past couple of weeks, just like thinking about it, like, oh man, you know, how should I race? But I think, you know, it's got to keep calm and kind of ride how I've been riding because it seems to work out the past couple of races. So I think I'll just do that. And I'll these two rounds be, you know, feel quite easy and not, you know, too nerve wracking. You've got a great tutor on your team. Have you been getting any tips from Jared? I actually haven't. I think he always just says kind of ride like you, know, like you know how to ride, so yeah, that's kind of like what I'm going to do really. The girls are just about to come down the ramparts behind me for a long day out in this heat and we can already see some of the vultures circling ahead. It's definitely going to be a tough day. So Tracy, the uh, third title, you can almost smell it at the moment. How much is that uh, on your mind? There's still two rounds of an eight, you know, eight-round series, so for me there's still a hell of a lot of bike riding to be done. Does it affect your outlook on it? Do you ride a little bit more cautiously or is it just same as normal? I don't think I'll ride any different. I've definitely got a heavier bag than normal. I've packed a lot of extra spares in hopes that, you know, I just I know I need to finish. I need to get points. That's the key. So uh, you're in second place in the series. Do you think you can uh, pull it back for the, for the series win this year? I don't know if I stay second, I will be happy because I crashed um, two weeks ago. I was in injury on my knee, 10 stitches. This weekend I ride uh, I, my best I can do, but uh, after uh, we will see. I'm not going to overdo it in stage one because a lot of the other races I've been crashing out in stage one. And steady run and for now we're going to open up the gas. Yeah, pretty pedally start. Legs were asleep, that's for sure. Pretty short stages here, so I don't think you can afford to maybe ride that, that kind of easy. I'm just glad to get that one out of the way because I flooded twice on that in practice. The, the trail and the ground really look like home so we have the feeling to ride at home. Yeah, I think I just got a win on that stage. I'm pretty excited about that because that was by one of my least favorites. I don't know, I just like stayed on the bike, didn't have any like weird moments. Nico Vulio was the man who pushed Richie Rude for his first win and again the young American comes out all guns blazing to get the better of the 10 time downhill world champion and the rest of the field. Cecile Ravenel also means business as she is 2.3 seconds up on championship leader Mosley to take early control of the GC and her shot at the title. Number two was very physical. Yeah. Very physical. <laughs> it's just bearable. But it'll be interesting if some rain comes. I did tell you I was gonna go flat out, right? So I did, and my front wheel washed out off the edge, clipped the tree, 
At least I don't need stitches this time. Just um, just eat my head on the tree, riding at high speed on the balcony trail, and we lost quite a bit of time, unfortunately, on that stage. Fabian Burrell crashes, all but putting himself out of contention. It is these cruel and tiny moments that can have huge ramifications in the outcome of a race. Another French title contender, Florian Nicolai, also damages his chances with a 19th. Rude continues to dominate and Mosley takes back control of her destiny. That one, I nearly got the stage wound, but I had a front flat near the end, so not bad, but definitely a few things that could be better. Now there are some places you can see all the mud and then just like dry dirt underneath, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's kind of nervous coming into it, but it went well, looks like. Francois Bailey Maitre steps up and gets within half a second of Rude, the closest anyone has all day, but it's still not enough. Mosley extends her GC lead by another 10 seconds as Cordoria is firmly cementing her third place. The rain may have started a little bit here at the bottom of stage four, but the party continues here in Spain. Huh, I'm seeing birds looking flat, some bathing at it. I'm pushing as hard as I can, no matter what, I don't want to crash and I had like no big mistakes. I want the first and the best stage and I come here, I expect nothing, just take some points for the overall. I did a really good stage here so I will see, I don't know what happened but I, I, was, I had fun all day, that was good. Yeah, he's, he's doing okay. I think uh, he's figured out how to ride a bike and he's uh, doing it well, so it's, it's cool. I've heard news from on track that you have been keeping it like, on lit on the back wheel through loads of sections. Yeah, just trying to you know, carry my speed and pump what I can, but yeah. I think i got to slow it down a little bit tomorrow, just make sure I can actually get through two days, not just one. Awesome crowd, like, yeah. such a fun event to do. Yeah. If the weather's going to be as mad as this, then who knows what happens tomorrow. <laughs> Tracy Mosley is 25 seconds up in the women's category and looks like she's on course for the GC win and the championship. Title contenders Vulio and Burrell end the day strong with a second and fourth. Where Vulio is only 18 seconds back in the GC, Burrell is over 40 behind as Rude has a 14.4 second lead over second place Johan Borelli. The band's been going wild, the crowd's been going wild, and as it all starts to disperse behind me for the end of the first day of racing, Richie Rude, the man who's currently leading the series and looking for his first championship title, has won all four stages. So going into tomorrow, he's got a very healthy lead. Let's see what he's got in store tomorrow. Lots of people out already, like totally going wild for everyone. Yeah, it's been good, good really good start today. <laughs> So much fun on the bike, that was so cool. I was even laughing sometimes during the stages. <laughs> that was a pretty uh, mad start to the day. Just a minute and something sprint and uh, mess the lines up and it's so short. I was going a little too quick. Didn't go right enough and pretty much went like 10 foot to flat. I'm used to ride, you know, in Belgium. We never go really over one k and a half, so it's more like home, I would say. Whilst Martin Mays takes the win on the shortest stage of the event, GC leader Richie Rude starts the day in an uncustomary 12th after saving a sketchy moment. But with it being such a short stage, he is only 4.6 seconds back on Mays and maintains an 11 second GC lead. I tried 
like to push really hard on stage five. I've made like a mistake, but I can feel like my legs are super tired today. I just hit a rock and I heard it going. I was like, Psh. I'm like, no. Yeah, I know. She's crazy. She's amazing. <laughs> she always takes care of everybody. <laughs> It doesn't really matter if I win, I guess, but I'm gonna stay in that number one spot overall. It's good. I changed the tire setup yesterday. Like, okay, let's go, go for the new tire. Mm. I was walking actually. <laughs> so much fun doing that stage. Nico Lowe has brought his simmer to a boil, demonstrating what we all know he is capable of. Jan Borelli crashes but still puts in an 11th position to maintain second in the GC. Annika Beerton punches, combined with her crash on stage two, that sees her drop out of the top 10 GC. All the karma of Tracy Mosley mending the other's bikes must be paying off as she racks up another stage. One of the few times I felt like, you know, how I was feeling all last season really, just still trying to find that rhythm. And uh, good to get one over on the teammate. Yeah, for sure. First time I've beat him in a stage for a while actually, so it's cool. <laughs> I feel like I've used my bag today a lot and yesterday, so yeah, I hope it's karma. I like when it's dry and uh, I ride without pressure and uh, it's a, it was a pretty good day for me. Jared Graves gets one back on his teammate. This time last year, it was him looking at the shining glory of a championship. Rude may have a handsome lead, but one issue and it could all be gone. Whilst he is looking on course for the win, there are five riders who are battling hard for the other two podium positions. We're at the bottom of stage eight and we've been chasing the race round all day. And as you can see from behind me, these are the amount of supporters, the whole mass of them also chasing around to support on the stages. It's been incredible here in Spain. These guys certainly love their bikes. And now we're going to head up into the hills and see the final stage of the day and see if Richie Roo can hold on to it for the big win here. It's the final corner of the final stage, and as you can see on cue, there's the thunder behind me, and the entire course has changed, I reckon. We've gone from dust that you can see underneath this mud to all this stodgy stuff, so a real spanner in the works for the final riders down the hill. I'm getting out of here. It's too wet. It was so fun until you got to the one section and it was unrideable. It was like on your ass, sliding down. Hey, it's okay. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> Chris, it's been an absolutely incredible weekend's racing, normally under the blaring sun, but final stage, loads of rain. Can you explain what happened? Yeah, well, I think, you know, when uh, when we first looked at coming here, they said it only ever rained for about 20 days. What they didn't tell me was that it had like a year's worth of rain within, you know, those 20 days. Massive storm rolled in, flash flooding at the finish line. We were in sort of deep canyon lands, which you can only imagine, you know, the, the rain there, the dirt didn't hold up. So we had absolutely no option but just to evacuate. The rain in Spain certainly falls mainly on the plain. Stage 8 is cancelled and the GC after Stage 7 stands as the final result, which means Richie Rood takes his third race win in a row and Tracy Mosley jorks up her sixth. Borelli comes in with his best result and it's only three seconds that separate him from the rest of the top six. Ravenel was the only girl to get within a minute of Tracy. Uh, Tracy, you're doing absolutely everything asked of you at the moment looking forward to this title. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this weekend I was really hoping I could consolidate my lead and, you know, another win would was, was obviously the, the best plan of action. But 
Um, I think the terrain here was, you know, it's dry, loose. At the start of the weekend, I was not super confident that it was going to suit me, but I really enjoyed it and had fun. Uh, and a couple of good stages yesterday kind of gave me a little bit of a, a buffer going into today, and I just managed to ride safe enough today and not make any massive mistakes. You've come out of this with your first podium, man. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm really stoked about the podium, you know. It's... Um, it's actually the first time I get on a podium and uh, I finished two times uh, for this season and you know, I really wanted to be on a podium and, uh, and it's happening, so yeah, I'm really happy. Yeah, and been an incredible weekend's racing for you. You finished up in second. How are you feeling about it all? I'm feeling so good. It was just so great. I, I had like a really good day yesterday. Is there anything you've been doing different lately? Because you just seem to be going one step further every race. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just enjoying my riding. I mean, I'm living in Whistler, so I'm trying to do some different stuff for the, every week. I think that's the key for me. Richie, it's uh, three in a row. How are you doing this? Yeah, I don't know. It feels pretty good. It's so weird, like when you kind of come in the season, you're like, yeah, I'll do top fives, and you end up winning three in a row, and it's just like, it's like yes, you know, it's a big relief. And you know, like coming to the last race now, I think I have a pretty solid, solid lead with points and stuff. So yeah, pretty amped at the moment. The man who could be king, Richie Rude, is striding ahead with a 300-point lead. There's 500 points on the table next weekend, so there's only three riders who can mathematically challenge him, but it will be a tall order. After a poor event for Burrell, Clemence moves past him into third. With a great performance, Johan Borelli moves up into ninth. Tracy Mosley extends her lead by another 50 points. Now she only has to really finish the final round to take the title. The top three stay the same in the team rankings. Lower down, Cannondale, Giant and Yeti all step up one place each. As the clock tolls eight behind me, it is the end of the weekend racing here in northern Spain for the seventh round of the Enduro World Series. But what a weekend we've seen. It has had absolutely everything. From baking sun that saw the riders struggling to take on enough water, we had a final stage that was cancelled because there was way too much water with the heavens opening. But I don't think anyone will be complaining because the riding's been incredible and the hospitable fans have been unbelievable. I'm going to go off and get myself some paella and San Miguel and we'll see you next week in Finale Ligura to see if Richie Rood and Tracy Mosley can wrap up those titles that they are so much in control of at the moment.